Hi, Lucy. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm very well. Thank you very much. Congratulations on the film. Thank you. It's gone very high up in my top 10 list already. I mean, it's only good. March. So, All right. you know, we'll see if it's there. We'll, we'll take it. It's there. We'll but take I it. I think it will be. Oh, thank you, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> there's so much about this movie that I, I love, and there's probably so much that you had to prepare for. But take me through the, the big hair of it all. What was your, <laughs> what was your process with, with putting the hair on and kind of using that to get into character? The hair actually was smaller than when we began. With the first few fittings, the hair was like a foot taller than that. And then I think with a few camera tests, we realized that might need to be reined back just to ever be able to have a shot at getting the entirety of her in. Um, it was really fun though. I mean, and, and those wigs were actually surprisingly light somehow, thanks to Francesco, our, our hair designer. But all of those elements, I think all of the elements that made it feel the kind of exit from myself and entry into that character, the clearer and all the more deliberate, um, I really enjoyed and, and was grateful for. Um, and the extravagance of that era of Versailles, of Marie Antoinette was, yeah, definitely part of the, the fun of it all. When you mentioned that, my, my brain just went to the lady, and I don't know if you've ever seen Mars Attack, but the lady's oh my got God, the yeah, massive hair totally. in Mars Attack. Yeah, so On that, that was like scale. straight away in my head. I was yeah. like, oh my goodness, yeah. that, would be, that would be something. Um, I mean, we've seen Marie Antoinette uh, in films before portrayed by lots of different people. But for you, what was kind of the, the hook for you in terms of playing her? Because we see different sides of her in this that we haven't maybe seen in, in other films. And again, like Chevalier, there's so much history that we do and don't know about her. Mm. I think it was, I mean, the main hook was being a part of telling this story about Joseph Bologna, who, um, who I wasn't familiar, whose name I wasn't familiar with. Um, and he's just such an extraordinary man. And I think their relationship was really interesting. And, and one that just felt so contemporary and, and, and relevant. And and I think it is one, I, I mean, Stephen and I, the director, spoke a lot earlier on about convenient allyship. And I think she's just such a precise example of that, her, our version of her in this film. Um, and she, I think, from an acting point of view, she has just such a clear trajectory in the film, which was really satisfying to get to map out. Um, and it starts as this really seemingly beautiful relationship, and that was so fun to create with Kelvin. And then the world that she dips into, because, you know, the audience just want to champion him, and, and as any kind of decent human, you just want to champion him. There was something that felt kind of, I don't know, important about being the counter to that. And I just wanted to play her in a way that elicited it, elicited zero empathy and was just all venom, all um, kind of fear and self-serving and kind of acting on offense as a kind of cornered rat. And so there's something... Um, I don't know, just that felt really extreme about that. And as an actor, I think that's a kind of um, uh, a tempting place to go to, to go to those extremes, especially when this, when you're feeding such a kind of um, brilliant story. This is a final question. I, I spoke to you many moons ago for Sing Street. So it's, a, it's many years ago, you know, five, six years Many moons ago. ago. If you are looking, looking from then to, to now, has have you, in, you must be delighted with, the opportunities that you've been given because you know Sing Street has such an affection for people and seems to have helped so many people from that film go on and you know because you were all young actors at the at the time and you've all gone on to to stuff how, how much do you put down to not just the, maybe the success of that film but that film giving you the opportunities you've been able to, to get so much of it I mean I emailed we've worked together since John Carney the director and I but I remember emailing him a few years ago I think when I was doing Murder on the Orient Express and just thanking him for the way that I work now, because of the way he talked to all of us, the ownership that he gave us of our characters, and just those, I mean, the gift that was that character of Rafina, it completely changed the way and informed the way that I work now, um, and, and just working with him. So yeah, it was a really, really pivotal film in my career. And, and it's one that if anyone approaches me with a huge grin on their face, I know it's because they're about to talk about Sing Street. So it fills me with, yeah, tremendous pride. Yeah, plus that soundtrack is... Oh, it's so enough. good. Always. Always. Absolute classic. Uh, Lucy, thank you so much for your time. It's ever a pleasure to talk to you. Good luck with you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, hey you guys! <laughs> hey you guys! <laughs> hey, that's what they all say. Hey you guys! Hey you guys!